I'm going to talk to you now about vibrato. Vibrato, what is it in the voice? Well, it's a fluctuating frequency. That means that the frequency, which we hear as the pitch, goes up and down by a quarter of a semitone each way from the fundamental, from the actual pitch. So there's a little bit of, of going up and down in pitch. There's also a little bit of going up and down in what we hear as the loudness or the amplitude. The rate at which it fluctuates is always between about five to eight cycles per second. That seems to be the comfortable rate at which vibrato settles. Some voices will have a slightly higher rate and some voices will have a slightly lower rate, but it's always within those parameters. And we find that absolutely straight singing is almost impossible. You cannot ask a human body with human muscles powered by human neurons to do an absolute straight line. What else do we know about vibrato? Well, it's possibly linked to tonus. Now, tonus is background neuromuscular activity in the brain. And what is happening is while we're awake, all the muscles, um, the, the nerves to the muscles are doing a little bit of firing in the background five to seven times a second. Now this stays very much in the background normally. It enables those muscles to be alert and ready to respond when we need them. Sometimes it can become a problem. Sometimes it becomes evident and for people who develop a tremor, that might be what's happening. Um, it also becomes evident if we have had a drug such as um, alcohol or sometimes caffeine or um, even, um, can't think, oh, nicotine, the other drug that may give us the shakes. But otherwise, it's just there in the background. We don't see it happening. But when we uh, do, we can enable it like a release. So if I hold my hand up in front of me, I can, if I'm holding it stiff, it's pretty still, all right? If I'm holding it completely loose, it's also pretty still. I can hold it in a sort of midway point where I can just say, release, let go, set off a tremor. Now that will carry on on its own now. I'm allowing it to happen, but I'm not directing the rate at which it happens. It's just there. We can do that with any part of our body. We can set up a tremor and we can just allow it to ride its own natural course. How does this link in with vibrato? Perhaps what is happening is a tremor in the main muscles of the larynx, the cricothyroid and the thyroarytenoid muscles. They're the muscles that by and large control the length of the vocal folds. The cricothyroid will lengthen them, the thyroarytenoid will shorten them. So as we're going between lengthening and shortening with those two sets of muscles, we are setting up a tremor activity between those two points which is what we then hear as the fluctuation in the frequency of the sound. The same might be happening between our diaphragm and our abdominal muscles as with the powering the breath. So we're getting a fluctuation in air pressure, which is leading to that fluctuation in amplitude that we hear. When we look into the throat or at the top of the larynx of a singer with a, uh, a camera, we see everything moving. When the singer is singing with vibrato, we see the epiglottis moving around with the vibrato. We see the walls of the pharynx going. Everything is moving along with the larynx itself. Is that because there's tremor in all of those areas and maybe that fluctuation in those surrounding structures will also be giving you a slight fluctuation in timbre? Um, or is it just because they are next to something which is wobbling? If you stand on a box that wobbles, you wobble too. What we 
uh, hopefully don't want to see in singers is the jaw and the tongue going with the vibrato too because that is just going to disrupt the whole system too much and sometimes is evidence of everything holding a little bit too much. What the vibrato does for the singer is it allows for rest and release between uh, each cycle. So five to seven times per second, you're going to get a moment of release in the muscles, which enables you to sing for much longer because you have far more stamina. So you can sing for longer, you can sing for louder. And that is why singers who take their voices to the extremes of, of projection, um, normally those singing in the classical style in opera because they are having to fill huge halls, they are unamplified singers. Uh, they will always have vibrato in their voices and if they didn't have vibrato, their voices would tire very, very quickly. It's also possible that this fluctuation is linked to what happens when we giggle and what happens when we sing fast notes. Now, when we sing coloratura, which is rapid notes, which you find in both classical singing and also in pop singing, um, maybe as we go from note to note, we're piggybacking on the natural fluctuation within the larynx linked to the vibrato. And a singer will tend to find that there is a rate at which they sing fast notes, which feels much more comfortable. They can go a little way either side of that, but they can't go too far outside it, or it suddenly feels cumbersome, which suggests that it is actually linked in with that tremor response. What we hear when we listen to a voice with vibrato, if it's the right sort of vibrato, we perceive it as that, it will help us tune to the sound, to the pitch of the sound. That slight regular fluctuation enables us to find the midpoint more easily. Our brain will iron out the ups and downs and will tune into the midpoint and our brain will hear it as a steady note. If the singer sings a steady note, the brain might hear that as being slightly flat or slightly sharp, or maybe slightly hard. The vibrato will soften it, will give it a shimmer in the sound. If we stop vibrato, if we sing with a natural vibrato and then we stop it in order to keep the sound straighter, that will always feel like a holding or a tension action. We have to actually prevent the vibrato from happening. Yes, it's possible, we can do it, but it's very difficult to do it for an extended period of time and you can't do it while you're projecting the sound. If the vibrato is too slow or too fast, that is nearly always a symptom of some imbalance in the, sy in the system, in the whole way in which we are producing the sound. It may be that we're tired, the voice is tired, the muscles are tired. It may be that we're pulling the tongue back and pressing down a little bit too much on the larynx. Sometimes tongue backing is linked with jaw holding. It can be linked also with misalignment in the head and neck and everything like that is always linked in with air pressure and airflow not being at its optimum. So there will be a whole package of reasons for why there is a vibrato that is too slow. And similarly with a vibrato that is too fast, uh, that may be that, that the airflow is not right for the system that it's meeting. Um, it may just be because everything's a bit tight.